another reading of A Thousand One Nights. May I present your host this evening is Mrs. Button. Miss Button actually, right? Yeah. She, <sighs> those of you who've been watching for a while noticed that she's been coming on this reading chair for a while, making herself really comfortable and I really, <laughs> anyone who knows a cat, you don't want to start a fight with a cat, do you? So I will be very gentle so we can start tonight's reading. Hold on, let me go to the other side. Okay, sweetie. Well, that worked well. Hello, world. Look at that beautiful lady. Okay. All right, you want to stay here? You want to stay? Are you? It's probably going to get up in a second, but I am giving it my best job. Welcome to another reading of A Thousand and One Nights. My name is Saman Gerard, this is Button. I am welcoming you from usually the comfort of my home. I think we're all set. I hope you all had a wonderful day. I knew it, I knew it. All oh, that hustle. Anyways, I hope you all had a wonderful day. And please stay, please stay. Just because Button left, there is no reason to leave me all by myself. <laughs> we are currently reading the story of Ala al Din, also known as Aladdin. And since this is the, the uh, original translation, like, the translation of the original texts of A Thousand and One Nights, the story is slightly different and a lot more cruel also. So let me fill you in. So we do have Ala al Din who actually bought Jasmine right? Because Jasmine was a slave. So this is what's happening in here. And, uh, but they're both like madly in love with each other. Then on the other hand, we do have a very, very frustrated and angry woman who has two sons. Thank you for the hearts. One son being a thief and currently in jail and the other one being ugly and heartbroken because he's actually in love with Jasmine. The book says he's ugly. That's not my own like, um, how do you say my own like, oh my God, I'm missing the word. You know what I mean. Anyway, so that very frustrated woman and mother of two is actually planning a really nasty plan to get Jasmine from Ala al -Din and give her to her ugly son so he's healed from heartbreak. So welcome to that story and enjoy the reading. Now, when it was the 263rd night, she said, it hath reached me, O auspicious king, that the governor came in to his wife, who spoke to him as she had been taught, and made him swear the divorce oath before she would yield to his wishes. He lay with her that night, and when morning dawned after he had made the ghusl ablution and prayed the dawn prayer, he repaired to the prison and said, O Ahmad Kamaki, or thou arch thief, dost thou repent of thy works? Whereto he replied, I do indeed repent and turn to Allah and say with heart and tongue, I ask pardon of Allah. So the governor took him out of jail and carried him to the court, he being still in bilbos and approaching the caliph kissed ground before him. Quoth the king, 
O Emir Khalid, what seekest thou? Whereupon he brought forward Ahmad Kamakim, shuffling and tripping in his fetters, and the Caliph said to him, What art thou yet alive, O Kamakim? He replied, O commander of the faithful, the miserable are long lived. Quoth the Caliph to the Emir, Why hast thou brought him hither? And quoth he, O commander of the faithful, he hath a poor old mother cut off from the world who hath none but this son, and she hath had recourse to thy slave, imploring him to intercede with thee to strike off his change, for he repenteth of his evil courses, and to make him captain of the watch as before. The Caliph asked Ahmad Kamakim, Dost thou repent of thy sins? I do indeed repent me to Allah, O commander of the faithful, answered he. Whereupon the caliph called for the blacksmith and made him strike off his irons on the corpse washer's bench. Moreover, he restored him to his former office and charged him to walk in the ways of godliness and righteousness. So he kissed the caliph's hands and being invested with the uniform of captain of the watch, he went forth, whilst they made proclama proclamation of his appointment. Now for a long time he abode in the exercise of his office, till one day his mother went in to the governor's wife, who said to her, Praise be Allah, who hath delivered thy son from prison, and restored him to health and safety. But why dost thou not bid him contrive some trick to get the girl, Jasmine, for son Habsalam Bazaza? That will I, answered she, and going out from her, repaired to her son. She found him drunk with wine and said to him, O my son, no one caused thy release from jail but the wife of the governor. And she would have thee find some means to slay Ala al Din Abu al Shamat, and get his slave girl, Jasmine, for her son, Habzalam Bazaza. He answered, That will be the easiest of things, and I must needs set about it this very night. Now, this was the first night of the new moon. And it was the custom of the caliph to spend that night with the lady Zubaida for the setting free of a slave girl or a mameluke or something of the sort. Moreover, on such occasions, he used, to, he used to doff his royal habit together with his rosary and dagger sword and royal signet and set them all upon a chair in the sitting saloon. And he had also a golden lanthorn adorned with three jewels strung on a wire of gold by which he set great store. And he would commit all these things to the charge of the eunuchry whilst he went into the Lady Zubaida's apartment. So arch-thief Ahmad Kamakim waited till midnight when Canopus shone bright and all creatures to sleep were dying whilst the Creator veiled them with the veil of night. Then he took his drawn sword in his right and his grappling hook in his left and repairing to the Caliph's sitting saloon, planted his scaling ladder and cast his grapnel on the side of the terrace room. Then, raising the trap door, let himself down into the saloon where he found the eunuchs asleep. He drugged them with hemp perfumes and taking the caliph's dress, dagger, rosary, kerchief, signet ring and the lantern, whereupon were the pearl, returned whence he came and betook himself to the house of Allah al Din who had that night celebrated his wedding festivities with Jasmine and had gone in unto her and gotten her with the child. 
So Arch Thief Ahmad Kamaki climbed over into his saloon and raising one of the marble slabs from the sunken part of the floor, dug a hole under it and laid the stolen things therein, all save the lantern, which he kept for himself. Then he plastered down the marble slab as it was before, and returning whence he came, went back to his own house, saying, I will now tackle my drink, and set this lanthorn before me, and quaff the cup to its light. Now as soon as it was the dawn of day, the caliph went out into the sitting chamber, and seeing the eunuchs drugged with hemp, aroused them. Then he put his hand to the chair and found neither dress, nor signet, nor rosary, nor dagger sword, nor kerchief, nor lanthorn. Whereat he was exceeding wroth and donning the dress of anger, which was a scarlet suit, sat down in the divan. So the Vizier Jafar came forward and kissing the ground before him said, Allah avert all evil from the commander of the faithful. Answered the Caliph, O Vizier, the evil is passing great. Jafar asked, What has happened? So he told him what had occurred and behold, the chief of police appeared with Ahmad Kamakim, the robber, at his stirrup, when he found the commander of the faithful, sore enraged. As soon as the caliph saw him, he said to him, O Emir Khalid, how goes Baghdad? And he answered, safe and secure. Cried he, thou liest. How so, O prince of true believers? asked the Emir. So he told him the case and added, I charge thee to bring me back all the stolen things. Replied the Emir, O commander of the faithful, the vinegar warm is off and in the vinegar, and no stranger can get at this place. But the Caliph said, Except thou bring me these things, I will put thee to death. Quoth he, Ere thou slay me, slay Ahmad Kamakin, for none should know the robber and the traitor but the captain of the watch. Then came forward Ahmad Kamakin and said to the Caliph, Accept my intercession for the chief of police, and I will be responsible for thee, for the thief, to thee for the thief, and will track his trail till I find him. But give me two kazis and two assessors, for he who did this thing feareth thee not, nor doth he fear the governor, nor any other. Answered the caliph, Thou shalt have what thou wantest, but let search be made first in my palace, and then in those of the vizier and the chief of the sixty. Rejoined Ahmad Kamakin, Thou sayest well, O commander of the faithful, but like the man that did this ill deed be one who hath been reared in the king's household or in that of one of his officers. Cried the caliph, As my head liveth, whosoever shall have done the deed, I will assuredly put him to death, be it mine own son. Then Ahmad Kamakim received a written warrant to enter and perforce search the houses. Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased to say her permitted say. Now when it was the 264th night, she said, It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that Ahmad Kamakim got what he wanted and received a written warrant to enter and perforce search the houses. So he fared forth, taking in his hand a rod made of bronze and copper, iron and steel, of each three equal parts. He first searched the palace of the Caliph, then that of the Vizier Jafar, after which 
he went the round of the houses of the Chamberlains and the Viceroys, till he came to that of Alaradine. Now when the chief of the sixty heard the clamour before his house, he left his wife Jasmine and went down and, opening the door, found the master of police without in the midst of a tumultuous crowd. So he said, What is the matter, O Emir Khalid? Thereupon the chief told him the case, and Ala al din said, Enter my house and search it. The governor replied, Pardon, O my lord, thou art a man in whom trust is reposed, and Allah forfend that the trusty turn traitor. Quoth Allah al -Din, There is no help for it but that my house be searched. So the chief of police entered, attended by the Kazi and his assessors, whereupon Ahmad Kamakim went straight to the depressed floor of the saloon and came to the slab under which he had buried the stolen goods and let the rod fall upon it with such violence that the marble broke in sunder and behold, something glittered underneath. Then said he, Bismillah in the name of Allah, Mashallah, what so Allah will it, by the blessing of our coming, a hoard hath been hit upon. Wait while we go down into this hiding place and see what is therein. So the Kazi and assessors looked into the hole and finding there the stolen goods drew up a statement of how they had discovered them in Allah al -Din's house to which they set their seal. Then they bade seize upon Allah al -Din and took his turban from his head and officially registered all his monies and effects which were in the mansion. Meanwhile, Archthief Ahmad Kamakim laid hands on Jasmine, who was with child by Allah al -Din, and committed her to his mother, saying, Deliver her to Khatun, the governor's lady. So the old woman took her and carried her to the wife of the master of police. Now as soon as Habsalam Bazaza saw her, health and heart returned to him, and he arose without stay or delay, and joyed with exceeding joy, and would have drawn near her. But she plucked a dagger from her girdle, and said, Keep off from me, or I will kill thee and kill myself after. Exclaimed his mother, O strumpet, let my son have his will of thee. But Jasmine answered, O bitch, by what law is it lawful for a woman to marry two men? And how shall the dog be admitted to the place of the lion? With this, the ugly youth's love-longing redoubled, and he sickened for yearning and unfulfilled desire. And refusing food, returned to his pillow. Then said his mother to her, O oh, harlot, how canst thou make me thus to sorrow for my son? Needs must I punish thee with torture, and as for Allah al -Din, he will assuredly be hanged. And I will die for love of him, answered Jasmine. Then the governor's wife arose and stripped her off of her jewels and silken raiment and clothing her in petticoat trousers of sackcloth and a shift of hair cloth, sent her down into the kitchen and made her a scullery wench saying, the reward for thy constancy shall be to break up firewood and peel onions and set fire under the cooking pots. Quoth she, I am willing to suffer all manner of hardships and servitude, but I will not suffer the sight of thy son. However, Allah inclined the hearts of the slave girls to her and they used to do her service in the kitchen. Such was the case of Jasmine. But as regards Allah al-Din, 
they carried him together with the stolen goods to the divan, where the caliph still sat upon his throne. And behold, the king looked upon his effects and said, Where did ye find them? They replied, In the very middle of the house belonging to Ala al din Abu al shamat Whereat the caliph was filled with wrath and took the things but found not the lantern among them and said, O Ala al din where is the lantern? He answered, I stole it not. I know naught of it. I never saw it. I can give no information about it. Said the Caliph, O traitor, how cometh it that I brought thee near unto me, and thou hast cast me out afar, and I trusted in thee, and thou betrayest me? And he commanded to hang him. So the chief of police took him and went down with him into the city, whilst the crier preceded them, proclaiming aloud and saying, This is the reward, and the least of the reward he shall receive, who doth treason against the caliph of true belief. And the folk flocked to the place where the gallows stood. Thus far concerning him, but as regards Ahmad al Danaf. Ala al dins adopted father. He was sitting, making merry with his followers in a garden, and carousing and pleasuring when lo, in came one of the water carriers of the divan, and kissing the hand of Ahmad al Danaf, said to him, O Captain Ahmad, O Danaf, thou sittest at thine ease with water flowing at thy feet and thou knowest not what hath happened. Asked Ahmad, what is it? And the other answered, they have gone down to the gallows with thy son, Allah al din adopted by a covenant before Allah. Quoth Ahmad, what is the remedy here, O Hassan Shuman? And what sayest thou of this? He replied, assuredly, Allah al din is innocent. And this blame hath come to him from some one enemy. Quoth Ahmad, What counsellest thou? And Hassan said, We must rescue him, inshallah. Then he went to the jail and said to the jailer, Give us some one who deserveth death. So he gave him one that was likest of man to Allah al din Abu al shamat And they covered his head and carried him to the place of execution between Ahmad al Danaf and Ali al Zaybak of Cairo. Now they had brought Allah al din to the gibbet to hang him, but Ahmad al Danaf came forward and set his foot on that of the hangman, who said, Give me room to do my duty. He replied, O oh, accursed, take this man and hang him in Allah al dins stead, for he is innocent and we will ransom him with this fellow, even as Abraham ransomed Ishmael with the ram. So the hangman seized the man and hanged him in lieu of Allah al din whereupon Ahmad and Ali took Ala al din and carried him to Ahmad's quarters. And when there, Ala al din turned to him and said, O oh, my sire and chief, Allah required thee with the best of good. Quoth he, O oh, Ala al din And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying her permitted. Ooh, it's getting really, really excited. So tune in tomorrow to listen to um, tune in tomorrow to listen to Joanna Godwin Seidel, who will be reading um, the story. And I will see you next week. And thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate the hearts and everything. And as usual, I will comment right after the reading. Hi, Anita.
and um, respond to your comments and kind comments and kind comments and kind comments. I'm blushing. <laughs> I have to go and feed the kitty. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next week. Much love and as usual, remember to go inwards and in inwards instead of outwards. And I will see you soon. Much love.